Um, so today we're going to go through and, and answer a question that, that some of the, the interns had, and, and this is something that I go through with my full-time staff. Uh, once a year, we'll kind of dissect and, and evaluate. Um, but Sophia actually asked me a couple weeks ago, she just said, you know, when you start a program, when you go and you take over as a director, as a head guy, um, where do you even start? You know, what do you do? How do you, how do you take over a program? Um, and, and obviously it's a great question. Obviously there's a, there's a lot of answers to it. So I'm going to just kind of summarize and, and go through my process of what I did of, of, you know, and, and obviously to this day, I still evaluate, um, if I were to go take over the program, what I would do and how I would do it. So I have those process sheets dialed up already. Um, so I'm just gonna go through that and just kind of start off with, with just answering the question of, of what's, the, what's the first thing you do. Um, so I really, I break it down into three main pieces of, of really starting a program, building a program. Um, <clears throat> the number one most important thing is the how, okay? To me, that comes before everything, um, before your first lift, before your first meeting um, with your staff, before you write a program, your how has to be developed. Um, so what, what I would call you know, our, our philosophy, our, our, um, our training philosophy, our coaching philosophy, obviously there are different things, but, but our coaching philosophy, how we're going to do things, that's absolutely number one. If you go into a program and you start doing all this programming and you start you know, hiring a staff and doing all that stuff and you don't even have your how yet, um, how you're gonna do things, nothing else matters, okay? So number one is, is his how. Um, and you know, I actually have a document typed up, which I gave you guys, this one right here. Um, everybody watching, if you guys would want this when we're done, feel free to email me, I send it to you. But it's just something I typed up um, about the how, just a quick page here, okay? So I'll just read it for you guys. I truly believe that the stem of a successful program begins in the weight room. Success is driven from the how, not the what. The transfer of this success to the field of play does not lie on the weights loaded on the bar of the squat rack, but rather the small, minute details in the mental approach of every rep, set, day, week, off season, and career. I believe that for the most part, this is a common understanding something that is easy to comprehend and not so easy to implement. It takes a certain grit and a high level of organization to reach these standards in the weight room. Once again, while I do believe culture starts in the weight room and sets the stage for your entire program, it does not end there. The head football coach must set the direction extremely vividly from day one. Every single thing and or person that touches your program must send the exact same message of that culture that started in the weight room. From the head coach to the position coaches, graduate assistants, interns, administration, secretaries, strength staff, academic advisors, janitors, nutritionists, equipment staff, training staff, faculty staff, facility staff, even family members. The concept of excellence or whatever standard it is that you're trying to set in your program must breathe through every molecule of your program. Your message must be clear your standard must be concise, and it cannot waver. If your program is driven by motivation, you are setting your program up for disaster. Motivation is a temporary stimulus that comes and goes. Motivation does not get you out of bed every morning. Motivation does not make you practice hard every day. A motivational-based program will shift like the four seasons. Now, having motivational moments in your program and designed implementation of motivation is a necessity. However, if it is the backbone of your program, your message and your standard don't have a chance of possessing consistency. Discipline must be the pillar of your program. Discipline will wake you up every day. It will get you through adverse moments when motivation is low and times are tough. You will always be able to rely on the discipline that you have created. If you haven't created any or your discipline has not been constant through every single piece of your program, you will see your program waver in times of difficulty. You can take that to the bank. Motivation is temporary, discipline is permanent. Good times and bad, discipline will always be there. Discipline is consistent. And this is the word that brings all this together, consistency. When I think of consistency, I don't think of it as a noun. I think of it as a mathematical equation. In the laws of algebra, in order for an equation to be consistent, 
there can be zero contradictions. Your program must mimic this equation if you wish to achieve success. From the largest, most general pieces of your program to the most minuscule, minute details of it. From the, uh, the CEO, i.e. the head coach, to the bottom of the totem pole, your message, your standard, your level of excellence must be consistent. Okay? And that, that whole paper is just about the how. You know, that's, that, that whole sentence isn't anything about the what, that is, that is directly the how, um, which must be, be developed right off the rip. And obviously, like I said, that's, that's something where you take over, you develop your how, who's obviously going to be the leader of that how? The head coach, the head coach. Our message comes from the head coach, which is why I would tell you guys, if you're going to lose a job, lose it in the interview. You know, I'm always going to make sure that if you're the head coach and I'm your director, our ideas and philosophies better line up, right? Or how are we ever going to preach the same message and really build that culture? So we have to have the same, we have to be on the same page. So that's first. You have to develop your how, and that how has to be consistent. You can't send a different message than the head coach. The head coach can't send a different message than you. And like I said, that has to breathe through every piece of your program. And that comes down to being extremely organized. But those hows are essential, okay? Um, so you get your coach's message. That's your how. How are you going to implement that in the weight room now, okay? Um, here, we obviously, we've taken that and we've done it, uh, you know, a few different ways. So um, how I broke it down when I first took over is, you know, I developed my how, how I wanted to do things, talk to Coach Bowden, how, you know, what, what was his how, how did he think want things done, and then how I was going to implement those and teach those things in the weight room through what we did. Um, so the first thing I, I developed was just a mission statement um, of, of how we were going to do that in the weight room. So our mission statement here at the University of Akron, the University of Akron football strength and conditioning staff's main objective is to create a sound environment where athletes will achieve the necessary traits to win in all aspects of both the game of football and life. This will be accomplished by abiding by four main principles on a daily basis. Accountability, discipline, mental toughness, and winning effort. We believe that excellence is achieved not just by what we do, but more by how we do it. And it is our goal as a staff to do it better than any other program in the entire country every single day. By demanding our four principles, we will shape our athletes both physiologically and psychologically to the fullest potential. Okay, so boom. That's the first thing I do when I take over. I get my how. How am I going to create this program? What is my how going to be our day-to-day? -day? And then how are we going to do that in the weight room? The how has got to be the first thing you do. There can, that cannot waver. You, and then everything else gets plugged into that, but the how has got to happen first. How are you going to create the culture in this program? How are you going to run your program? How are you going to instill those principles into your athletes? The how has got to be the first thing that you do. Okay, does that make sense? Yes? Yeah. All right. Second thing, obviously massively important, is the who. Okay? Once I have my how, okay, I know what message I'm trying to send. I know how I'm trying to send it. I know the, the general outline of my program. I need the who to help me instill that program, okay? My staff, my assistants, my interns, the janitors, the people that are in our program, the how is, or is, the, the how is nothing without the who. Because obviously we can have the best how in the world, but if I don't have the right people to instill that how, I'm not gonna do much, okay? So the first thing I do when I take over a program, boom, is I need to know my how, okay? And then I'm gonna take the people that I know that I trust to help me that can shape that. If I have somebody that I know that's my best friend that been in this industry forever, but his hows, what he believes in, doesn't match up with mine, then he doesn't match up to my who's, okay? So my who's have to match what I'm trying to send, um, which is obviously massively you know, important that you surround yourself with the right kind of people. Um, so that's the second thing I did and would do. After I developed my how, it was now, okay, let me go find dogs to help me implement this message. Let me go find the best four assistants in the country that are gonna help me implement this message. You gotta have the who, okay? If you don't have a good who, like I said, I'm nothing without you guys. I can't do this job without you guys. That isn't, that isn't like a, a thing where I'm trying to be nice. That's a freaking fact. And any director in the strangers that thinks they can do it without a good, without a good team is, is nothing. Okay, absolutely nothing. So get your how, 
get your who, and then the last the last thing is now once you got that is the what, okay? <clears throat> Which obviously is still important. We have to have a great plan. We are, our what's are, are still important as far as what we're doing on the practice field, what we're doing in the weight room, what we're doing to insert that how. Um, you have to have a, a, a fantastic plan. And, and without any of these pieces, I don't believe that you can achieve this, okay? If you have a great freaking staff, a great freaking program, but how you implement things, you're never gonna be a successful program. If you have an unbelievable how, you guys do things great, okay, but you don't have people helping you, and you have a really shitty plan, you ain't gonna do it, all right? And all three of these things go hand in hand. You can't you can't operate with, with, with one without the other. Now obviously I said that there's an importance level to me to where the how's the most important, the who's next, and the what is, is, is last, but this spo these three spokes in a wheel, if one of them's out, the, the tire don't spin, okay? And that's just that's just a, a fact of what, what do I have seen what's worked for me, but this is what I'm thinking the first thing is when I take over a program or if I'm trying to build something, okay? So the what, specifically, how do I do the what? And this is what I talk about, that we go over this every single year. We evaluate this, we break this down, all right? We're always gonna plan in a year, a year advance, okay? So I'm always gonna program, so for example, what we're about to go through right now, okay, the what. I program, I've already programmed from 2019, or 2018 to 2019, okay? That's already done, all right, what's today? October 12th. October 12th. What year? What year? 2017. Okay. 2018 to 2019 is already done. Okay. The whole entire year of 2018 is done. Um, already programmed. Now, that being said, as you guys, especially you two are here in the summertime, so you guys obviously know a lot of this, but it's a general plan. It's not a, a, a something where you have to be able to make changes, but you want to have a, a, a plan. Um, you want to have a program that you, you you can make alterations for, not where you're just writing some up on a napkin every day, okay? So I always plan a year in advance, all right? So going through that, annual plan, all right? And this is just kind of the the, uh, the overview of what we do here, okay? So annual plan. As a strength and conditioning program, our annual plan is a necessity to organize, track, and guide us through a year of training. This plan possesses essential components to the development of not only our athletes, but our strength and conditioning department as a whole. This annual plan contains distinct phases with extremely specific objectives that are necessary to maximize both physiological and psychological adaptation through a 12 month period. And those get broken down into preparatory phase, transition phase, competition phase. Um, it is noted that our main objective while lifting weights throughout the annual training year is not to just make us better weightlifters, but more importantly, better football players. By training functionally, we will produce the most biomechanically optimal athletes for the game of football, okay? So that's our annual plan when it comes down to the what's, breaking things down, okay? So that, that there's, it all stems from that. If I don't have that, I have nothing, okay? So now I know very general, this is the most general component of what we do, and you guys have seen the most specific pieces of what we do, which is obviously the actual blocked out program for the reps and the sets and the percentages, okay? But that's the most general piece of it, all right? And then it's broken down into each off season, okay? So we, we call preparatory phase one, is winter conditioning, all right? You see the dates are already on there. We already know we're starting up on January 14th, 2018. Preparatory phase runs through the 16th um, of March. And uh, like I said, we shift into the next phase there. So that preparatory phase one. The first preparatory phase begins the first day of spring term and will last approximately eight weeks. It'll be broken into two specific sub-phases, hypertrophy and max strength. As preparatory phase one comes to an end, the team will test during week eight prior to transitioning to spring ball. This phase also includes mat drills, where we will push our team both physically and mentally in order to achieve team unity, team discipline, and toughness, okay? And like I said, it's pretty general. And then I have our main objectives. Our main objectives in preparatory phase one, we want to correct muscular imbalances that were created during the season. Obviously, we, we end the season with muscular, of, of muscular imbalance. We're going to correct those. Okay, we want to remap the neuromuscular system during hypertrophy while increasing muscle fiber size and training capacity. We want to emphasize strength and mass physiological gains, uh, adaptation during max strength phase, 
and we want to begin our progressions of running, landing, jumping, change of direction, biomechanics, okay? That's our main objective. So before I have a program, I have this. I know this is what we need to accomplish, um, and I don't have necessarily the, the details done, but we have, the, we have the general outline of what we're gonna do, okay? Then we shift into our first competition phase, which is spring ball, March 19th to April 21st. The first competition phase lasts approximately five weeks and consists of the athlete maintaining progress from the preparatory phase, as well as staying in peak performance. So we wanna keep them peaked throughout all of spring ball, not lose any uh, strength or power that we've gained. Um, so our main objectives are to maintain the sport specific biomotor abilities, perfect the technique while preserving range of motion. We wanna dissipate the fatigue throughout spring ball. Um, so like I said, that's, 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 that's all in the plan. Um, we have that transitional adaptation phase, which is post spring ball. Okay, we're trying to hit hypertrophy one more time, get a quick adaptation before we send them home for a couple weeks, and then it's summer conditioning. Like I said, we already have our summer conditioning dates lined up. We know we're gonna start on the 29th. Okay, we know we're gonna end on July 29th. Um, and, and how we're gonna do that, and I don't need to go through every single piece of this thing, but you guys see, we got, like I said, we have summer programmed already. You shift into mat drills. We already have the times, the dates, the bod pod, what we're gonna do, it's all shifted in here. Spring ball, summer workouts, we have times, we have everything we're gonna do, so it's planned. Our what's are extremely organized um, so that we don't miss any piece of our program. Um, now that being said, uh, Green, if I were to go and be the director of training at a different school in January and I were to start a program, would I just take this program and implement it there? Not at all. Why not? Um, because we have different athletes, um, different coaching staff, different needs, um, just a whole different atmosphere. So what would like what what, what could that change in, in my thought process? What would I have to then take into consideration? Your how changes, your who changes. Why would my how change? Um, just how 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 things would be done. Is, um, you have to introduce yourself to administration for that. Um, in the athletic department or academic department where we get our bob pods from and see get that scheduling done and probably um, going to onboarding with our administration to further meet with the uh, academic or the athletic director and his uh, assistants to get scheduling done that way and get the scheduling done with uh, the other strength coaches if there are other any uh, and that we have to share the weight room with right um and that affects and then also, everything. That affects everything and also affects So you wouldn't just write a program first, right? Not at all. You'd have to get your how first. And and your your global how doesn't change. If your global how is changing, then you're not you're not you know, you're not very stuck in your principles. You know, my core four is gonna stay. Wherever I go for the rest of my career, I'm always gonna depend I'm always gonna demand accountability. I'm always gonna demand discipline, winning effort, mental toughness. Those four, those core four aren't gonna change. Um, but as you narrow those those hows, those those will those will those will manipulate a little bit towards to, to, to where you are, um, which is, is like I said, it, it is. And you're absolutely right, coach. You go to a new spot, you have different kind of kids with maybe different kind of mentalities, or maybe you recruit different areas. So those kids' mentality is going to be different. Maybe they're more receptive, or we can change things that we have to be more strict on here at Akron, and that I can back off a little bit there. But maybe I have to really hit home with this because that's their main weakness. Um, but you have to sit back and evaluate that first. Equipment is a great friggin', mm -hmm. you know, if you, if you have a program, well, a lot of the stuff we program here is because we have that equipment. Um, or some of the stuff I don't program here is because we don't have that equipment. So that's a, another piece of it to um, take into effect. And then when you actually do the programming, you have to evaluate, and if I went to a new program and ever started something new or new athletes, or even when we have freshmen, our, our freshman program is always a little different because it depends on what their weaknesses are, you know? Um, and how many you get? Yeah, and you have to, you know, you, you go take over the program, before I really sit there and write out a massively long program, I'm gonna take a couple weeks just to look at those guys and say, okay, we have no, they have no posterior chains. Uh, squat depth, they, you know, they, they didn't squat as deep as I'd like them to with the previous staff. Um, they didn't do any Olympic movements. I like Olympic movements, so now I have to, you know, teach them, take them through technique school. Um, instead of just flying and saying, all right, we're going three sets of four hand cleans on day one, because that's what I've always done. That ain't a very good answer, right? Um, so a lot of things to think about when you take over a new program. Um, 
and you, you can't just, like I said, one template doesn't fit all. You can't just chug and plug. Um, we're at the point now where at Akron, you know, we obviously, we adapt and change and, you know, we, we manipulate things on a yearly basis in that same context. We go, when we sit down, we talk about, okay, what kind of team do we have? What kind of leadership? What are our weaknesses? Oh, we're really good at Olympic movements, but we could be, be better at squatting. Okay, how are we going to change our program to fix that? All right, we're really, we're really mentally tough. We're disciplined. We're accountable. We're not very competitive. Would that change my programming? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Screw the freaking arm farm at the end. We're going to go freaking race. We're going to go do king of the ring. We're going to go do something. Um, completely change your program. So you have to constantly evaluate. And, and these things, you know, we, we know our how, you know, the who changes, but it doesn't, the mold doesn't change. I hire the same kind of people that I want to fit into that mold, but the what changes every single year. Um, and, and even weekly, you know, like you, you, you have a plan and that's a great thing, but if, if, you know, you have guys that on Wednesday, their CNS is blown out and they have a huge lift on Friday, and instead of backing off them on the Wednesday, but just because it's on the sheet, we're going to do the whole workout. Well, then you not only do you blow up Wednesday, but you miss Friday, which is supposed to be your most important, important lift of the week as well. Um, so I think having the ability to adapt is massively important. Um, what, what, what general questions? Obviously, I just threw a ton of stuff at you guys really quickly. Where, where, where else can I get more detail about? I guess probably easier. Where can I help? Well, one thing, it's like nothing's ever set in stone. No. Everything's always changing. Always very. And then uh, the type of program that you're in, too, like, we have guys for four or five years. We had a bigger program. You have guys that are going to be there for, for three years or have immediate impact on the field. So the different types of athletes is huge. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what I mean. I, I think our role at, like, a MAC level school is completely different than a role at like a big time power five school because if I'm, you know, we have to develop the athletes. We have to we have to take guys that were one stars and athletically develop them into three, four, five stars. When you're coaching all five stars, um, you're you're and I can't speak from experience because the only stuff I have is at LSU. But what I'm thinking is I'm not going to break these guys when I get when I get our NFL guys back. You know, I'm not necessarily like thinking how oh, I can take this guy's performance and push through. I'm, I'm like, okay, he's broken from the NFL season. I'm gonna fix him. I'm gonna get him back to, to base level, and then just get him moving, get him mobile, get him, get him so he's bending well, he's running well, he feels good. Um, I'm not necessarily thinking about how can I take this guy that runs a four three forty and make him run a four two forty. How can I take this guy that has a seven hundred pound back squat and make him a nine hundred pound back squatter? At what point? Is it enough? You know, I mean, like, isn't 600 pounds on your back enough? Like, do I really need to see you squat 700? Isn't a 45-inch vertical jump enough? Do I really need you to do a 50? Or would it be better instead of spending time trying to make you more stiff, which would be more injury prone, um, making you a little more supple and buttery, getting you a little more mobile? Um, what becomes your, you know, your go-to? Well, here we get kids that come here with 25-inch burps, and they flat out aren't explosive enough to play Division One football. We have to develop them to become explosive enough. When you're at a LSU or an Alabama, or you're getting kids that come in as five-star athletes that are jumping 40 inches on the burps, that their freshman year are squatting 600 pounds. So what more? And already have the frame. Right. What more do you really need to accomplish there, um, where you're not putting them at risk for for an injury? You know, in the weight room, or like I said, I mean, you get guys that are already very twitchy, more twitchy. That's tendon stiffness. When tendon stiffness goes up, explosive power goes up, but what else goes up? Injury risk, Injury risk goes up, right? The tighter those tendons are, the, the, the higher chance you have for muscle, soft tissue injuries and tendon pulls, um, tendon tears. So that's a whole other component to think about too. Um, but yeah, that's that's like I said, I mean, people like you know, ask me those kind of questions all the time. Well, well, uh, well what's your program? What's your, you know, who am I coaching? You know, it's not like, I can't just send you, hey, coach, I want to get Jack to send me a program. Well, that's way too vague. I need details. What do you want? What do you do? What do you like? What don't you like? What, you know, what what equipment do you have? You can't just, like, there's not a cookie-cutter program um, for every school, for everybody. What works at Alabama probably wouldn't work here. You know, what works at Ohio State probably wouldn't work here um, because we have different athletes. We have different facilities. You know, if I, I have, we have, we have 12 total machines there. If we were running a hit program in here that was machines, 
we probably wouldn't be very efficient, would we? Not at all. Right? So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a, there's, there's no one program, which I was convinced there is. When I was 16 years old, and I was like, that was like my goal in life, was I need to find the best strength program in the world. I'm going to memorize it. I'm going to freaking run it for the rest of my life. I'm going to find the one nutritional supplement that's the best. I'm going to find the one that they don't exist. They do not freaking exist. There are so many things that work. And that's why the how is number one and the what is number three, you know? Like, that's, uh, there ain't no doubt uh, what's more important. So, that's got to be what they said. As soon as you guys take over a program, if you don't have a how, you're already pretty much. Right. Which all you guys should be developing as you guys, as you guys get your next opportunities, as you guys move on. And, you know, Green's been to 47 different schools in his career. You know, you pick up a few things from from their house, but you know, Green, you better have a how already written down, typed up in your computer. As when you take over as the head guy at Florida State, it's like it's not like oh shit, uh, how, well what am I gonna do now? You already have your house, and then it's just plug and chuck. I know my how, I know the kind of guys I need. Let me go find some dogs. Uh, okay, saw my athletes, saw my program. Now I can develop my what. I can pick and choose and take these things and. From there, it's honestly easy. The how is once the how gets done, the rest just falls in place, you know. Yeah. I have more of like a general question. I know it just like it depends on like everything you just said, but when you're evaluating the athletes in the facility and everything, how long can that do you really have? Because don't you have to start the program and start creating it? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a tough question because especially like in our day and age, you know, you don't have like the old John Wood in eight years to turn a program around where you can really, you know, what I would love to do is like, you know, you guys have seen our technique school. Like I would love for that to be my whole first off season program. But if, you know, we're not big, fast and strong for that first year, you take over a program and things are going to go so well for you, you know? So you have all this pressure. Um, and it's even like, you know, with our kids, like we, we got to get our kids ready to play football. So you have to decide and limit some of those things. So I don't know that I have the right answer for how long is too long, um, but you better you better you better be pretty efficient about your process, you know. Because um, if you take you know you, you don't like I said you don't have six seven years turn around program nowadays. If they don't see results, you know year usually you'll get a buffer year year one, but if they don't start seeing some direct results year two year three, you're just gone. Um, and that's just how it is. So. It's definitely different than it was 10 years ago, um, 20, 30 years ago. It's, it's, it's a different society. You know, they want us to win. They want us to win right now. So um, I think it's, just, it's being well balanced of, of you know, taking time to figure it out, what your team's mental and physical weaknesses are, um, what your, your uh, facility limitations are, what your uh, monetary, monetary uh, limitations are. Um, but you better be – better figure it out pretty quick, you know. You better figure it out pretty quick. Yeah. Starting off of that, I mean, you kind of do have a template or an idea of what you you are going to go into, like at a bigger program. So one of the programs that I know someone took over, they, they had six tiers that they were going to go off of. Well, they took it over in in March. Well, what did you do with the first year, two tiers? I had to get rid of the first two tiers because we had to get ready to play so-and-so. I mean... And the big thing that the head coach that took over wanted to do was change the culture. So changing the culture was the first thing that they did. And the type of athletes that they had to do, they went through evaluations and they realized that skipping one of the two tiers, they could kind of get away with it. But some of those guys that were in that low 10% kind of lagged behind. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just that constant evaluation and trying to push through it and knowing where you're at and how you can develop those athletes. It's just huge. When, you, when you're organizing, you plan the way that I'm telling you to plan. Like, you know, when I got here, it, well, I didn't just have a year plan. I mean, I had a four year grand plan of where I wanted to work up to. You know, things that I wanted to do that first year, but we just weren't ready for me. Like our, our first year, you know, we weren't, we weren't our squats weren't where I wanted to be from a, a mobility standpoint. We were low enough, we weren't quite mobile enough. Um, so we would do freaking we would squat, back squat, and then I'd put a very light load on them, and we'd freaking front squat. Um, now, something I would never do now, but it was part of a plan and process to, to be able to get a pretty good stimulus on them, but teach them at the same time. And, you know, a lot of complex, you're teaching guys to clean. And um, 
it's just a, it's a it's a delicate but uh, obviously important important thing you got you got to have a plan for it. And I think having something like this a template so when you go you know you, you don't just sit and throw it all in the trash and say oh I'm not even gonna look at this new school new me you know right. I'm gonna take this stuff and say all right. Uh, this will work great here. This, nope, throw that out, throw that out. Maybe this instead. Oh, I have this equipment now. Let's do this and this and this. So you, you, you use those templates. You definitely don't throw them out, right. but you just have to understand that you can't just chug and plug. You can't just, you know, I came came up here, I didn't just say, oh, I'm going to take LSU's program and implement it. Boom. I love the LSU's program. I was freaking great. I think Coach Mom is the best in the industry. Um, but that program doesn't work for us here, you know, just from the athletes we have to the facilities we have to the equipment that we have. Um, so that was obviously a, a, a piece of that puzzle. So you had to start, over, not over, but like you had to do a lot of like your own, like uh, research and like template building and everything. Oh, I, I, all, all the templates we have, I created from scratch. Yeah. Those are all, those are all, and that, that's you know a whole other probably episode, but that was um, that was a freaking process in itself, yeah. man. I mean, when you and it's it's so nice to have them now, but that first year. Man, I put in a lot of hours in here on the computer, but it's it's absolutely essential, and that's actually why I wrote this up here. Process sheets, you know, like that's like it's not a number four, but man, if I can recommend one thing to you, is have process sheets. Um, and that's you know what what is a process sheet? Well, it's it's so you know green's gonna come and go. Like I, I've already had three greens here since I've been here. I've had three guys that have come here and ran the nutrition program. Um, so when green leaves, I can't just be like. Because, you know, obviously I, I want Green to move on and get a better job, and that's what I want out of you guys. But when Green leaves, I can't just be screwed and be like, well, how are we run our nutrition program? So I have process sheets in here um, that, you know, are extremely detailed of how we set up the nutrition bar, what supplements, the inventory process. You know, that's all saved in here. Um, in small things like the PowerPoint, you know, Green does all the PowerPoints here. But we have a process sheet on the exact size the PowerPoint needs to be because I haven't made a PowerPoint in probably a year and a half. So if I went in there to do it or teach someone how to do it, I couldn't tell you right now, but I have a process sheet. So I can go back and look at that process sheet and say, okay, Dave, you want 54.75 on the length and 29.42 on the height that matches our TVs perfectly, you know, whatever it may be. Um, so process sheets are massive. Like, you know, Harris, Harris is all the computer stuff now. I haven't, I haven't gotten on there and done Excel documents in, you know, well, I guess Harris just took over it, so I've done it in the last probably two months. But before that, I hadn't done it in a year, and I had to teach Heist how to do it, um, who was the Harris before Harris was here. Um, and the only reason I could teach, remember how to teach Heist is because I had the process sheets, um, which go through how to implement the numbers, how to do our formulas. And um, so those are, if you want to have a well organized program, and especially as how detail oriented we are, process sheets, process sheets, process sheets, process sheets. Those are massively important. Is there any chance we could see copies of those? They're all in there. It's all in there. I think there's an actual folder. It's called process sheets, and it has all of our process sheets on there. Cool. Um, what other questions? What's the first thing that you look at and reevaluate a program and start to go into it? Uh, like at the new year. I mean, we we all we always sit down, and and I well, I actually meet with our seniors every year too, so. I'll meet with our seniors at the end of the season. I'll take them up in the team meeting room, and I'll ask them. And I mean, obviously, I take those answers with a grain of salt, um, but it's great to hear their perspective. I say, you know, what did you guys like in the weight room? What didn't you guys like so much? What do you think we could have done more of? Um, and like I said, obviously, I take those answers with a grain of salt, but I mean, it's so powerful to hear those things. Um, and that gives you a great direction of, uh, wow, they really hated this. Oh, they really liked that. Oh, they, they wish we had more of this. Um, and at the end of the day, what you end up learning about these kids is they want discipline. They want to be held accountable. Um, it's not, you know, you think that they don't like it, but that's the one thing that seniors always tell me that they're so thankful that we do down here is they say, hey, you know, as much as it sucked to do this, this, and this, you know, it was awesome. You know, keep being, keep holding the guys accountable, keep, keep them disciplined. Like, that's honestly, in green, you were up there with me last year. Yeah. That was probably, that was I mean, out of the 18 seniors that were up there last year with us, Every single one of them, when they stood up, that's what they mentioned was the accountability, specifically the accountability and the discipline of what we do in the weight room. That's what they talked about, um, and to continue to do that. And um, but so that's that's one of the first things I do is I want to see I want to sit down with seniors. 
then I sit down with our staff and we go over actual you know film movement prep like how do we move this season we go over our injuries where did we where did we have a lot of injuries where did we not have a lot of injuries did we have soft tissue stuff did we have a lot of shoulder stuff did we have some knee what whatever it means so we go over all we go over every single injury from the entire season um we go over just general um effectiveness effectiveness and efficiency of our processes where can we be better in the nutrition bar where can we be better on the computer where do we spend too many wasted hours this year um and we evaluate the whole freaking year um were we strong enough how do our numbers compare to everybody else you guys know in the industry how do our injuries compare to everybody else you guys know in the industry and we kind of go through all that stuff um and then you know you, you just you, you kind of mix and chug and plug from there and then obviously the last component of it is what have we learned this year you know what what are you what have you read this year that's you know got research-based evidence that we might want to change in our program do you have something better rotator cuff stuff than what we've been doing do you have better neck exercise than what we've been doing Oh, Sophia, you mean activating glutes is important? You have research? Let me see it. Oh, maybe we should add some glute activation into our warm-up. Things like that. Um, so that's really the main process. Sit down with the seniors, sit down with the staff, and then let's talk about the research and what we've read and how we have how we have adjusted things, um, and then we make those small adjustments. Um, how did you implement your how initially once you first got here? Like what were? Uh, I mean, my, 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 my number one thing is I'm always, in, and I'm sure you guys remember this from you guys' first days or interviews, is I'm going to tell you exactly what I expect out of you. So there can be absolutely zero, um, zero excuses for not knowing what you're supposed to do. So I'm going to, you know, the first thing I did is I laid it all out there. Hey, I'm, I, you know, what, what you did with the guy before me or what you do with the guy after me, I don't care. That's not what I'm worried about. This is how this is going to work. If we don't do these four things every day, this is going to be the consequence. We're going to show up every day. We're going to do this. 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 If you're late, this is your consequence. If you don't wear the right thing, this is your consequence. Um, if we're not meeting that standard, this is your consequence. And you just lay it out there. And, and that way the expectations are extremely clear. So there's never a – I just think the buy-in is so much better when they know. You know, like when a kid – if a kid – if if a kid doesn't know you have a late policy and comes and he's late and he's like, why the hell are you punishing me? I didn't know that you had a late policy. Um, that buy-in is going to be an issue. If all of a sudden one day you just start, you know, ripping your team because they're wearing earrings and you never told them they couldn't wear earrings, you know, that, that's an issue. So my first thing, the first thing I'm going to do to implement my how is communicate. Communicate with my team. Like I, I'm, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to tell them this is the freaking standard. And if you don't meet the standard, this is the consequence. Uh, so you get, you have to communicate, and it, that's that's the first thing. If you want your how to be effective, they have to know the how, they have to believe in the how, um, and then you have to be disciplined, with the how, consistent with the how. I mean, everything that I talked about in that that paper, you know. Um, but yeah, no doubt, the, the first line of, of when I walk into school is, is everybody on that team, whatever program I'm taking over, they're gonna know my expectations. They are gonna know my standard. They're not gonna leave that room saying, oh, so. What is, this, what is this guy about? They're gonna freaking know what I stand for. They're gonna know um, what's coming their way, you know? I wanna take it back to the <clears throat> to the who a little bit. And um, we've, all, we've discussed the how um, within the curriculum, we've talked about the what, um, with how we do things, whether it be our conditioning program and everything, but like, talk about taking over program, power five school, you're the director, you have to hire four people, um, and you have your who, you know, say if, if you had a staff of, you, you could hire four more people here, but the four people that you were hired here would be different from the four people that you may hire somebody else, even though the, even though it may be the same kind of outlook of how you're hiring them, but what are you looking for when it comes into your who, and how you mesh with people, and the long hours that we have to go through. I mean, I think pretty, pretty simply, um, I mean, one, I need people, I need influential people. So I need four dudes that can influence people. Um, you know, what is coaching? Coaching is teaching. Teaching is motivating people to want to learn. That's Tommy Moffat 101. Um, so one, I, I need people that can influence people. That's that, like, that, that, that's number, number one. Um, and then you guys always hear me say this, but the, you know, the two main qualities I look in the leadership is, can you influence others? Do you make other people around you better? 
Um, and those are my two main things that I, I, I have to absolutely 100% have. You come work with me, you have to be able to influence my athletes, you have to be able to influence me, and you have to make my athletes better, and you have to make me better. Um, and that, that's probably the, the really important thing to me, and I don't know if that's selfish or smart, um, but I want four dudes surrounding me that make push me to get better on a daily basis, whether it's push me to read more, um, push me to coach harder, push me to learn more research, push me to communicate better, push me to have a better relationship. Um, but I, I need people that that because you know I, I just I just believe that if they're making me better, I know they're definitely they're good enough to make our athletes better. They're gonna they're gonna be if they're comfortable pushing their boss, they're gonna be comfortable pushing their subordinates. Um, so to me, that's important. Somebody that's not afraid to challenge me and make me better. I don't want a bunch of freaking yes men. I don't want a bunch of people that say, this is sweet just because it's what you wrote. You know, I want people that are going to do things, you know, our way, but at the same time bring their own niche into it. And it's like what I tell I mean, these guys all the time. It's like I want them to put their own stamp on the place. I don't want them to be, you know, sleeve robots that do things. Um, you know, the way and how, when, when they when I give you know them a task when they first came here I said you know this is how I've done it this is how I would do it there's a certain standard that it needs to be done too but how you get to that standard um, you know put your own mark on it, put your own spin on it um, is is a big piece of it. but you, you you gotta be influential you gotta be able, you gotta be able to have the balls to make me better and challenge what we do and and uh, that's the only way we'll continue to grow. If not, then we'll, we'll, we'll scale out. Um, so I would say those are the, the two main things. Obviously, there's a, a lot of other small pieces that go into it, but globally, those two are must. If you can't do that, you can't, you know, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna make the cut. Those are, those are what, what I need to mold into my house. What else we got, guys? Good. Yeah. So, like I said, I mean, that's that's a very obviously general. There, there's obviously a ton of more details that go into taking over program and creating culture. Um, and I have I actually have a whole other document on more specifically creating culture, um, which is just much more detailed. Um, but that that I man, that's that's the the global general piece of it. Does that help? Um, of what goes through my mind, and, and and like I said, we we you know we do that every year. We kind of reevaluate and make sure what we're doing is really meeting our how we're doing it every year. So uh, it's always good practice, um, and and you know prepares you for in your mind, and that's what you guys should be doing. Is you might not be in a position to take over a program right now, but when you do become, you guys should be have everything you guys need already ready to rock and roll. When you on that interview for a head job. And you should have a booklet of this is what I would do, you know, whatever it may be. So um, hopefully that helped. Um, and like I said, if you guys want any of these documents, uh, just reach out to me. I'll give them to you. If not, uh, we'll see you next week.